Welcome to our service on this third Sunday of Advent, which comes from this lovely little church of St Michael and All Angels in Little Badminton. I'm afraid that we've had to cancel many of our services throughout the benefits this month, so please do check the website for details. It's also important that if you wish to come to church over Christmas, you must please let the church warden or me know in advance in order to book a seat. This is because we have to maintain physical distancing and the numbers who can attend are limited. Thank you. When the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins, he pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Yes, 
is taken from Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Here endeth the first lesson. Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, then were we like unto them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with joy. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. Yea, the Lord hath done great things for us already. Whereof we rejoice. Turn our captivity, O Lord, as the rivers in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that now goeth on his way weeping and beareth forth good seed shall doubtless come again with joy and bring his sheaves with him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is taken from the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the sixth verse. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? 
John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees, who had been sent, questioned him. Why then do you baptise if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptise with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to unite. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptising. Here endeth the second lesson. The Magnificat my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. The Collect for the Third Sunday in Advent O Lord Jesus Christ, who at thy first coming did send thy messenger to prepare thy way before thee, grant that the ministers and stewards of thy mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready thy way, by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at thy second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in thy sight, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all the sorts of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, 
may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Church and the world and thank God for his goodness. We pray for the Church throughout the world. This week we pray for the Church of Norway, the Diocese of Borg. We pray for the Diocese of Southwell and Nottingham, for our overseas partner Diocese of Western Tanganyika, we pray for the Falkland Islands, the church in the Falkland Islands, for Bishop Timothy Thornton. We pray for the benefits of Tewkesbury, for the clergy and people of that benefice. We are asked to pray for the children and young people within the worshipping community and for the appointment of a new administrator. Pray for our own Bishop, Rachel, and for our area Bishop, Robert. Pray for bishops everywhere, for the clergy and the people of the parishes. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Her Majesty the Queen, the Royal Family, for our Prime Minister and Government, We pray at this time for the Brexit talks. We also pray for successful rollout of the vaccine. We pray for those who work on the land in this area and throughout the country. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick and the bereaved, remembering particularly Mary and Gordon, David, Bobby, Terry, and any others known to us who need our prayers at this time. We most humbly beseech thee, O Lord, to comfort and strengthen all those who in this life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We remember the departed, particularly for those whose years and minds fall at this time. Jill Major, Fred Erner, Roger Clutterbuck, and for the recent departed, Martin, Richard, and Colin. And for any others known to us, for those we love but see no longer. May the souls of the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in thy mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in thy mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and us promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore.
Amen. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. May I speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week I asked the question, can we accept ourselves? As we prepare with John the Baptist for the coming of Christ into our world, can we accept ourselves utterly? That means forgiving ourselves. And that for the Christian involves confession and absolution. As we stare at that painting of Holman Hunt's, Christ standing at the door and knocking, we ask ourselves, are we ready to open the door and let him in? This we can only truly do if we properly accept ourselves. Preparing the way of the Lord involves repentance. As St John says in our Gospel reading this morning, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When a person is injured or hurt by the words of another, this can be taken to heart and become an open wound, an open sore, unable to heal because it is continually being scratched and the hurt and the anger remembered, re-experienced and never allowed to heal. A meditation teacher, Gelong Thubten, in his book A Monk's Guide to Happiness, teaches that enemies and hurtful words actually help us grow. We generally have friends because we like being around people who make us feel comfortable. However, it is the challenging, disruptive elements in our lives which truly help us to grow. How could we learn the life-changing skill of forgiveness without them? I found this a very challenging thought, seeing our enemies, those who hurt us, who we normally hate, as friends. Realising that it is our enemies that challenge us and therefore make us stronger within ourselves, more resilient. Challenging us to either retaliate and smoulder or on the one hand, or on the other hand, to forgive. That is quite a thought. St Paul says, rejoice always. I think it is true to say that it is easier to rejoice when we rise to the morning sunlight or see someone we love than we're feeling hurt or grieved. Thubden says of forgiving someone who hurts us, forgiveness training involves understanding where the aggressor is really coming from. The aggressor comes from aggression of self and that internal state of mind is something which is very hard for them to control. To forgive someone else, we do need to get beyond our own response and think for a moment where that person who has hurt us is, what kind of place they are in. Thubten continues, When a person is filled with negativity, it's like eating poison and then uncontrollably being ill. In the same way, when somebody is angry or suffering in some way, the poison comes out in words and deeds often uncontrollably. Feeling overpowered by anger and pain is very much like being under the influence of alcohol, where one's actions often become regrettable. Even in a case where somebody does seem to plan their actions, maybe in a seemingly cold-blooded manner, or they appear to enjoy hurting others, that person is still not in control of themselves. They are under the power of strong internal negativity. If we can recognise this aspect of the human condition, it can be incredibly liberating, as the burden of rage and indignation will start to drop away. Some of you may wonder how this relates to scripture. But is this not exactly the attitude of our Lord when challenged over the woman caught in adultery? Jesus lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. 
When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Very often, we are so preoccupied with our own self-righteous indignation that we are unable to see above the parapet of our own partial vision. We are taught that we must forgive. But how is that possible if we are filled with a blood-curdling rage? Preparing ourselves for the coming of Christ involves repentance and confession. Repentance means acknowledging our anger and indignation and the harmful effect it has on those around us. It means taking the humbler part and doing so urgently as Christ is coming. It is about forgiveness and trying to understand the gremlins in our own mind, the unresolved grief or unhappiness or whatever it is that has risen to the surface in the aggression and anger we experience. It is about repentance and offering it to God in love and obedience and forgiving others their anger. As we enter into this process, we are preparing for the way for Christ. We are removing the planks from our eyes. We are enabling ourselves to see more clearly. We are equipping ourselves more effectively to respond compassionately and honestly. It may be that there is still an issue of justice that needs to be faced or a consequence that needs to come. But the spiritual and emotional fuel that so often hinders peace in our world from the pride and all that will have begun to be removed. We will have come one step closer to the kingdom of God, one step closer to preparing our hearts and minds to receive Christ into our hearts. And what is more, we will be happier for it and find it much easier to do, as St Paul writes, to rejoice always and to pray. Some of the obstacles in our hearts to that prayer, they would have all been removed. Amen.
let us pray for God's blessing on all for whom we have prayed today and upon ourselves and our families. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen.